wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for your tender watch care over us. Father, thank you that you have given us a place where we can come and openly study your word, yes. where we can pray together, where we can come into the presence of Almighty God. Lord, we thank you for the priesthood of the believer, that we don't have to go through anyone to get to you, but you made a way, Lord Jesus, where there was no way. And Lord, we cannot thank you enough for all the bountiful blessings you have blessed us with. Lord, we know every good thing in our life has come from you. And Lord, we thank you that you continually watch over us. You continually speak to us. You continually work in our life to mold us and make us more into your image. And we pray for the freedom of the Holy Spirit to move amongst us tonight, to speak to our hearts, to transform us, Lord. Father, thank you for all you're doing and all you're about to do. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Weston and Lauren, Darren Clark, Orville Stone, Nancy's going to be traveling. Tina has prayed for her uh, niece. She's doing okay. Elroy. 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 A.C. Smith. And he had a motorcycle accident. And he's got a prosthesis now. And he's doing better. Uh, Beatrice is going to be traveling. Robbie's yeah. going to be traveling back home. Yeah. Uh, Lenita's going to be driving to Houston. Kay Roberts. Uh, Gail Hinkle, Cancer, Della, uh, that's uh, Ann Warrior's uh, daughter in law. Yeah, she said she wasn't she, she has cancer, as well as uh, two other family members in uh, wow. Bobby's family. There, there's their in laws, Ann, uh, Sadie Garrett, Frankie Monty family, Strand. Uh, Bedford, Gustavo, uh, he had cancer and he had surgery and he's doing better, but he still has cancer, but they think they can get it with uh, chemo. Uh, Jimmy Pierce, cancer free. That was great. Uh, Patty and Tammy are going to be traveling. And we had uh, Fisher, and I didn't get what was wrong with Fisher. Fisher. That's the one that's he, he had had COVID and he's doing better, okay. but he's still oh, not COVID. completely over. Okay. Uh, Delson Watkins, he's got colon cancer. He's going to be having surgery. <clears throat> Uvalde <clears throat> and Carolyn White family. Uh, and now we've got Lenita's going to be traveling. Any others? Uh, Paul, um, did, uh, I can't even think of her name this one, reported on Strand. Yeah. Did she say that he was supposed to go back and get some tests done this week? She didn't give a date as to when oh, it was going to be Okay. But he she still had a, a huge lump on the back of his head. But uh, I didn't see, I didn't hear everything. Yeah. But it drained it drained down, but it's come back up when he's yeah. on some antibiotics and now it's uh, came back up. So they're going to see what they don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Well, I saw um, the what is his name? Bill Bill Thetford. Bill Thetford. A while ago, as I was coming to church, and he told me that he uh, thank you for, for thank us for praying for him and uh, that he was going to take test done this week, but I didn't hear it mm. this morning, so that's why I asked. Well, Kristen didn't know about the yeah. test this week. Mm -hmm. cool. She wasn't sure when they were going to do it. Well, that's what he, Bill had, said this next she week. She had talked to him uh, what, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, okay. That was the lady she had. Yeah, okay, well. We need to pray God gives some wisdom on that. Bobby? We need to put Pat Stone on there, too. She's got a bad cold. Oh, did who? I mentioned this morning, I'm sorry. Any other? Sonny, would you mind letting me go? To the no, no. Dear Father, we just thank you so much for this wonderful day, Lord, and for the special opportunity we have to pray and to lift up each name that is on these lists, dear Lord. Father, we especially want to pray for little Strand, that you will touch him, that you'll give the doctors wisdom and discernment. And Father, that if it will be your will, we pray you just cause that lump to go away and just bring complete healing to Strand. And Lord, all those that are traveling, I didn't get down to all the names, but Lord, uh, we know Beatrice is, Lenita is, uh, different ones are, Lord, be with them. Watch over Robbie as she comes back. And Father, we just thank you for your tender watch care over us every moment of every day. And Father, for each one that is sick, we know you are Jehovah Rapha, the God of our healing. Father, we pray that you would magnify your name as you touch and bless each one. All the relatives of and more, your Lord, that have cancer, 
We pray that out of your abundant love and grace that you would touch them and cause this cancer in each one to go into remission. And Lord, that you would be glorified, that they would have a mighty testimony of all that you have done in their life. And Father, we know that all healing comes from you. So Father, our eyes and hearts are fixed upon you and all that you're going to do. And we give you the praise, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. There's one other that uh, I just failed to mention. And we pray, we've been praying for him, and that's John's story. Of oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Let's take our hymns and turn to page 361. Oh, man. Serpent, 
which there's discussion on whether Satan actually turned himself into a certain a serpent or whether this was symbolic language or whatever. But I think that he must have turned himself into a serpent because it is used throughout scripture. Satan is called the serpent and the devil. So she, he began by questioning the word of God and what God had told them. The woman said in verse two to the serpent, from the fruit of the tree of the garden we may eat, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. Now, was that correct in what she told Satan? No, what did she add to it? Don't touch it. Yeah, don't touch it. So here, we have the twisting of God's word by both parties and always brings about uh, consequences when we twist and turn. Look around the world today. Do we see that happening around us today? You know, there are whole religions built upon twisting the word of God. And how can you tell they're a false religion when they do what? when they add another book to the Bible. New World Translation, that's Jehovah's Witnesses. They added another book, another translation that they came up with that would better fit what they believe. Now, we know also the Mormons. What did they do? They added two books, The Pearl of Great Price and uh, The Book of Mormon. And we know that as they did that, they twisted the word of God. They say that Jesus and Satan are what? Brothers. Brothers. Can you believe that? That's like saying day and night are co-equally the same. No, they're not. They're distinctively different. And Jesus was not related to Satan. And we know that Satan is not equal with Jesus, is he? He is a created being, but far inferior to Jesus. So, they both twisted the word. And then we get down to verse 4. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So was that a correct statement that he made? Partly. Partly. It's a part truth, which you can say is a total lie, because if it's not the absolute truth, it's a lie. So once again, there's another lie that shoots forth, even though it had a semblance of truth to it. So when the woman saw the tree was what? Good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Now, you know what a, what a revealing statement that they're talking about. They never realized before that they were naked. Why don't you think they realized that before and what difference does it make? Well, they were pure of heart prior to Yeah, I think so. They were absolutely pure of heart. And there was no real temptation going on before Satan came on the scene. So we see that the first thing they realize is that they're naked. And what did they do in their feeble attempt to be able to approach God? They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Now, isn't that what we do today? Don't we try to cover over and we say, well, you know what, if I donate 
some land to the church or if I give them some extra money or if I do this or if I do that, then I will win favor with God. You know, that is so contrary to what the Word of God says, but there is a vast amount of people that believe that. And sadly, some churches will even try to use that to their advantage to get something that is given with the wrong motive, even though it might be used in the right way. You don't get ahead by compromising with what is right and what is true. It always ends up getting you before it's over with. So here we have this picture. They cover themselves up with fig leaves to try and come into the presence of a holy and almighty God. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, surely they knew that they couldn't hide from God. You know, God knows everything. God knows everything about everything. He's all-knowing. He has all omnipresent. He's everywhere at once. You know, we were talking this morning about how big the universe is. But yet, what does it say about God? He measures the universe by what? The span of his hand. That is a big God. We serve an awesomely big God. Now, he's not limited to a body, he is spirit. And even if we saw him in bodily form, it would be a shock to us. Even as John tried to describe him seated, sitting on the throne in heaven, he was grasping at ideals and words to say, even though Daniel might get a little clearer. But still, if you look in Ezekiel 1, you see that it too is very, uh, interesting presentation of God and who he is. And so, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and the woman hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Now, why do you think he didn't call to Eve that he called to the man? <coughs> Do what now? He's accountable. He's accountable for his family. You know, part of the problem we have in America today and the breakdown of the family, we have removed men from being the, the head of the family. And by doing that, how did we do it? Well, we came up with the women's liberation movement. We came up with a woman could do everything that a man can do. What did that get for the women? Well, they can be right there on the front line fighting a war, and uh, they can do it just as well as a man can do it. Well, they may be able to do that, but that is not the design that God has for women and men. You know, men, just like they're fighting about with this uh, transgender swimmer that uh, has an advantage because he has muscles like a man, he has different features and strengths like a man, and so he has a distinct advantage over the women. Yeah, he is a man. Whether he wants to say he is or not, he is a man still. That's exactly right. But that shows you how twisted things have become. You know, who would have dreamed five or ten years ago that all this transgender junk was going to come on the scene and that teachers in school would be urging kids to re-identify to the other sex. It's just straight out of the pit of hell is all the world it is. And God has given us different roles. And when we move outside of the will of God, we move into error. And we suffer the consequences of our error. We know men and women are equally loved by God. And they are equally endowed with unique gifts that they can use to glorify God. 
You know, I believe we want to just more simply to raise the kids at home, but yet that doesn't say the father should not also have responsibility to teach the kid, especially spiritual things, that he is responsible for the spiritual well-being of his family until they reach an age of accountability, and then they take on that role themselves. You know, I found myself fighting the desire to still preach at my kids and try to get them to do what I feel like they need to do. And God reminds me from time to time, they are of accountable age now. And you know what? There's not much I can do except pray for them. And it's a spiritual battle that goes on. And you know, I just hope that when all is said and done, that I didn't try to push my kids too hard. You know, Lenita and I were not dogmatic about them always being there in church. If there was an activity that they wanted to do at school and it conflicted from time to time with the church meeting, we tried to see to it they could go do those things and not suffer a great deal. And you know, I don't believe we have to be here every time the doors are open. But I think you are missing a blessing when you don't come because chances are we don't read and study and spend time in prayer the way we do at church at home. So, okay, so the Lord said, where are you? Now, did he not know where they were? What is he saying? Yeah, he knew where they were. So then why did he say, where are you? He wanted them to have an opportunity to confess and to be upfront about what they had done. You know, why does God want us to confess? So he can forgive us. You know, when Jesus preached his first sermon, what was it? Repent! Repent! For the kingdom of God is at hand. That was the basic message. John the Baptist preached the same message. And that must show each one of us how important repentance is. Because we are wicked, wretched, sorry sinners. And that doesn't change. I was listening to uh, the cathedrals coming over here. Just the sinners saved by grace. And we are. We are. You know, we might puff some powder on us and try to make ourselves smell better and look better, but the truth is, we have missed the mark. Every one of us have missed the mark. And the only way we're gonna get into heaven is not if the good outweighs the bad. Let me tell you something, we're all bad. We fall short, but Jesus paid it all. There is no way to get into heaven outside of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all this works mentality, you know, now it's popular to have this social agenda and going in and trying to help and do these different things, a lot of food deals and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with those things. I think they're good, but if you're doing it to earn favor with God, you best just forget about it. Because you have favor with God if you are covered in the blood of his precious son. And that will never change. God don't love you more on one day and less on another day according to what you're doing. God loves you the same every day. Every day. And he always calls to us, if there is sin, repent of it. And it says in 1 John 1, 9, what? Say it. That's right. Confess. Yeah. For by grace you've been saved through faith. No, that's not the same one. But yeah, that's right. We are to confess our sins. First John 1 9. Okay, so then we go on. He cries out and asks him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And what a horrible word. What is it? And I was afraid. For the first time in all of eternity, there was fear 
from being in the presence of God. Now, we don't want to get these confused. We should have a holy fear of God. And that is because God is awesome beyond our understanding. And we should have reverence for God, but not be afraid of God. You know, God loves us with a love that we can't even begin to comprehend. And his love never changes. And he's always willing to cleanse us and forgive us if we will confess our sins and repent. What does repent mean? Turn from it. Turn. You're going one direction, you turn and go the other direction. So repent. So he said, he was afraid, so I hid myself. Verse 11. And he said, who told you you were naked? Did he know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew. He's just giving more and more opportunity to talk about it and confess it. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman <laughs> who you gave to me to be with me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. Now, he wasn't an upfront guy, was he? He didn't say the book stopped here. He said, she did it. <laughs> and you know what? Don't we all do the same thing now? We're still like little kids, pointing the finger. I love listening to our wonderful president. And uh, they'll ask him about the price of gas or the price of groceries. And he never wants to step forward and say, I did it by my stupidity in the things that I pushed on America. Number one, all at once, changing from fossil fuels to green energy. You know what, that's the same thing he did in Afghanistan. His generals told him, you need to hang on to the big air base. You need to do this a certain way. And what did he do? He just simply said, the heck with it. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And that's what he did. And 13 soldiers got killed because of it. He will not take responsibility. And that's sad. Any leader we have should be willing to step up. And even that little treasury lady, Janet Yellen, at least she said, I messed up. And she told everybody. And you know what? It wasn't the end of the world when she confessed her failure. We all make mistakes. And we as a people are very forgiving. We forget, but we all fall short. And many times they don't confess their failures today. And so then he goes on and says, verse 12, the man said, the woman whom you gave me was the one that did it. Then verse 13, then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, okay, I'm going to step up and I'm going to take the blame here. Oh, no. No, 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 no. She said, and the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Well, that's a partial truth. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you more than all cattle. Now, that's an interesting statement, cattle. You don't, we don't ever think of a serpent as being upright and walking around like cattle do. But before that time, he probably was able to walk upright. And so he wasn't slithering on the ground like we think of a serpent. But that would be part of the judgment. <laughs> Cursed are you more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. Now what is enmity? Hostility. Hostility. Okay. Is it anything like fear? Could well be that. But we know fear and hostility are not wanting to be around each other is a good way to look at it. Between you and the woman and between your seed, you know, I never realized how many thorns and thistles there were until we left Fort Worth and we moved to our piece of land. I had no idea a tree could be pulled down to the ground 
by all these vines that were pulling on it. And eventually, if nothing changed, it would be pulled down to the ground. And I will never forget, we had to cut, cut, cut briar over and over on our land. We had a little bitty tin horse, Murray riding on board. And we treated that thing like a tractor because that's as close to a tractor as we're ever gonna get. But that little baby worked hard and it worked out pretty good. So, but their country life is a lot different from city life. So we see the curse and do men still live by the sweat of their brow? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, that's right. And do women still have pain in childbirth? Yes, they do. So we see what God said is actually still going on. So then it goes on. Now the man, verse 20, called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Now what's the big deal about that? That's right, a blood. You know, God showed them the way to come back into fellowship with me is going to require a blood sacrifice. And so we see, and that's like Cain and Abel. They knew that God required a blood sacrifice Yet, what did Cain do? He offered him the curse. Because the curse was everything you got from the ground. So in essence, and it also had to do with his faith or lack thereof. So anyway, so garments of skin were the way to come back into fellowship with God. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us knowing good and evil. And now he might stretch out his hand and do what? Take also from the tree of life. Well, what's the big deal about that? Be bound to live forever in our sin. So it was an extreme act of love what God was about to do. So therefore the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turns every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. So that's a very interesting picture that shows what God made sure that they didn't have access to the tree of life to be remaining in sin forever. Okay, does anybody have any questions of what we've looked at so far? Any thoughts that you may have that you want to tell us? Go ahead. You know, I ask some dumb questions every now and then. That's I right. There's them. no dumb questions. Did God create angels? Yes. Yes. When did he create them? How, how I don't really know. He created everything. Yeah, well, we know that he created them because they're there, but exactly when he created them, I, I would think at the, you know what, God was in eternity past, so he could have created them any time. And we are limited in our scope and understanding of how long a period of time that man was on the scene before eternity. So we know that one day, whatever it was, God stepped out and he spoke everything into existence. But I kind of think angels go much further back than that. That's my own thoughts. And I really don't have any scripture to back that up, but I do believe that's the case. And what is the main role of angels? Does anybody know? Messengers. Messengers. That's the okay. case. Yeah. His, his most exalted angel was Lucifer. And Lucifer had the gift of worship. And the way God made him with the, uh, I don't know, all of his makeup and his tubes and all the stuff that he was a leader in worship of God. He had to be made before God created Adam and Eve. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. 
Okay, any other questions anybody have? So then we're down to chapter four, Cain and Abel. Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord. Again, she gave birth to his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of flocks. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Now, we know there are grain offerings, and they're perfectly acceptable to God. You know, the, the different produce that they would bring about, that they could offer that to God. But we also know they're inferior to the way that God said he wanted them to approach him. He wanted blood sacrifice. And that goes all the way through the Bible to the time that Jesus came on the scene. And Jesus had to sacrifice his blood. So Abel on his part also brought the firstlings of this flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering. But for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. And look what God does. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why are you angry? That's a good question. Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, what? Sin is crouching at the door. Now, does that still happen to us today? You better believe it does. You know, we need to pray through things that we do. We need to be sure we're doing it God's way that's pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. A lot, a lot of times we don't pray through big situations, especially we just step out and go for it. And that, then when we get in a mess, what happens? You need to start praying. Yeah, then we, then, it's like we need to do the cart before the horse, not after the horse. So yeah, and it, it makes a big difference in the way things happen. So if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door and its desires is for you, but you must master it. How do we master sin in our life? Because it's still there. How do we master sin? Who's ever had an issue with anger? How did, do you still, are you able to master your anger? How do you do that? Bring your thought captive first and just recognize that So, you're saying you think about the consequences for a brief moment before you launch. Is that right? That is the only way to really defeat it. You've got to. What is looking at the consequences? What is that called? Called wisdom. Wisdom. Looking down the road and understanding if I do this action, it's not going to turn out good for me or my family or for anyone else. So you've got to be able to stop yourself, like you said. Take that thought captive what, what and ask, things, huh? Pastor, one of the things I learned, the Lord showed me a long time ago about anger and getting mad, because I used to be pretty quick-tempered. Yeah. And uh, so, so everything that we do is about Christ. Yes. For, should be toward God and for God. It's all about everything about Jesus. Yes. There's nothing about me. So what I learned is to stop taking things personal because that's where anger is. Yeah, that's about. right. Why, why should I get offended because Elizabeth didn't like what I made for dinner? There you go. That's so right. I, that's her problem. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. So it's always best, and we have to be. But this 
praying. We have to stop and have a quick prayer to defeat the enemy. Because sin does long to mess your day up and mess your life up. Now, Satan can't drag you to hell because you're saved, but he can make your life miserable. Wonder how many car incidents have turned into road rage. And that person that shoots the other one, I wonder how many regrets they have about caving into anger in that moment. You know, that one little action can ruin the rest of your life. And so we need to understand, Satan is looking for chinks in your armor. And if he can get you to blow up and to mess up, he can mess up your day. He might be able to mess up your whole life if you do something really crazy. You know, I was going through uh, the cater, and you have these four-way stops there back by the courthouse. And you're always trying to figure out who's going to go next or whatever. So I went out there. Well, I kicked off a guy that was in a truck, and he started looking like he was going to hit me. He swerved over there like he was going to hit me, and at the last minute, he turned away. Well, you know what? You have that split second to think about it. You better say a quick prayer and be willing to step out and to let that anger be dealt with. So it's always crouching. So sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you. But you must master it. Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain did what? He had anger, and he had an opportunity to deal with it, but he ignored it, and he killed his brother. Yes, go ahead. What it's talking about is self-control when it says, but you must master it. It's talking about self-control, and self-control in Galatians is one of the fruits of the Spirit. That's right. And unless we have the Spirit in us, we're not going to have that self-control. That's right. You're not. That's right. You know, and we went off on several of the attributes of the Holy Spirit this morning, wisdom and all the different ones, but self-control is also a fruit of the Spirit. What difference does it make if you have self-control or not? Well, it makes all the difference in the world. If you let your emotions take over your life, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Each one of us will. So, verse a Cain told Abel his brother that came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Are we our brother's keeper? Yeah. Are we? we are. And we need to watch out for each other and protect each other and help each other. And I know sibling rivalries can really do a lot of damage in a family. I know my brother and I had a lot of different issues through the years. He would get mad and I was afraid of him because he'd whack the fool out of me. So, you know, it's just different issues that can linger on and on. And hopefully one day the Lord will give you victory in those areas. And my brother's changed a lot. He still needs to be saved, though, and I still pray for him. because, And he still battles issues with anger. You know, he's one of these type of people that, at the drop of a hat, he can explode. And it might be over politics, it might be over football or baseball or whatever, but he's got an anger issue. And so, then it goes on, am I my brother's keeper? He said... What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now, do you think that was really happening? I believe God could hear that blood. And it, you notice how God, when he went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, remember the words he used? He said, I must go down and see if according to the word that has come up, whether or not they have done this great evil that it speaks about. And then if they had, I will have to deal with them. So 
God hears things we don't hear. Amen? He does. And he heard the blood of Abel. Now, he said, consequences. Boy, if we would stop and think about consequences, we would do a lot of things different in our life. You know, I remember one time, Lenita and I went on a trip to Colorado, and we got kind of sideways with each other, and I put the hammer down on the car, was flying down the interstate, and a patrol car pulled me over. <laughs> and, you know, I was talking about, well, I'll mail this money in. No, you have to pay this right now. And so, you know what? I deserve what I got, the consequences. And we all have different consequences to our sin. We would be much better off if we would put a break on what we're about to do, pray about it, think about it, and do something different. Now, you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. Now, that was, quite, that was quite a consequence right there. That the ground, he was a farmer, and he was, I hear something. Something. I don't know. Nope. Okay. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment. Or the uh, to both of them are in the center. No, in the center over there. There, there you go. So we get that here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hear it now. Oh, it. yeah, I thought I did. It's church now. Didn't you say one of the air conditioners is blowing? Well, it turned out it was a feedback. Oh, okay, okay. The mic. Okay, so we're going to pick up 13 next time. Anybody have any thoughts, final words they want to say about what we looked at tonight? You know, it's very interesting. If we would stop and think about the scripture that we have in front of us, it has the power to help us transform our life. Because, yeah, I still hear something going on. Hear it? All right. Well, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you for your word. Father, we pray that you will watch over each one of us as we go about the different things we're going to do next week. Lord, that we would walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, that we would love you, that we would love each other, that we would continue to lift up each other. And Father, we thank you for each one that came out tonight. Bless them in a special way. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Lord bless y'all. I would like to point out that my wife almost always likes what I make. <laughs> she does all, really does all the cooking, so hey, that's very good for me. I don't know what to do that no way. See? I don't think so. Listen. Could be, yeah. Turned on and see. I don't think it's very loud.